Hey, this is John Arpreg. And Rick, by the way, the camera thing is right there, so you want to look right over there. Oh, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you look right at us, then it looks kind of weird. Oh, okay. Um, right. This is just uh, free video coaching that's kind of bonus material. <laughs> this is <laughs> Thank the you. Advent season. I appreciate it. And we are uh, getting ready for the celebration of Advent and talking about the idea of radical acceptance and how uh, what the coming of Jesus is about is that God deeply, fully, wholly loves, longs to accept you and me. And that's what we need the most. And we actually need to radically accept our lives. And we actually do that best through God. And there's a uh, statement that the Apostle Paul makes when he's writing to the church at Rome. They're having all kinds of relational problems. And towards the end of the letter, he says, accept one another then just as Christ accepted you to the glory of God. Now, we'll talk about that through the Advent season, that idea of accepting each other. But I wanted to talk to my friend, our friend, Dr. Rick, Rick Blackman, uh, because he and his wife, Sherry, developed a scale of acceptance. I've talked about that a bit in this series. Actually, Mary is a wonderful picture of moving through the stages of acceptance. But I thought since I had the chance, it'd be wonderful for us all to hear a little bit about how that scale of acceptance got uh, designed and what's behind it, how it can apply to a relationship, friendship, marriage. Uh, Emotions. Uh, yeah, you know, lots everything. Of things, yeah. So, yeah. Rick, walk us through a little bit. Where did that idea of a scale of acceptance come from and what are the components of it? You know, John, where it came from originally is um, I'm, I do a lot of marital therapy. Mm -hmm. And Sherry and I were asked to do a uh, talk once. Um, one of my things is uh, I like to think that the biggest challenge to any marriage is how will a couple deal with differences. Mm. And that you don't know very much about how different you are when you first marry, but that every year <laughs> that goes by, you know more about how different you really are oh, from your beloved. Yeah, so it's now that you're moving closer together, you're actually learning more about your differences. If you're halfway awake and paying attention, yeah. that's right. So Sherry and I were going to do this talk on embracing differences. And we were taking a walk and, and kind of preparing for it. And Sherry asked this really good question. She says, what if there's some differences like you're never going to embrace? And I thought about, oh, that's a good point. And we made up. You didn't ask her if she had anything in particular. <laughs> oh, I'm sure she had a lot of things in uh -huh. mind. We made up a scale on the spot that hmm. I have now on a board in my office. And it's a five-point scale uh, that goes from condemn to endure to tolerate to accept to embrace. And the way that I started off using it and the way we used it in this course that we were teaching is you want to, as much as you can, move up the scale. And I will tell you as a marriage counselor, a lot of times when people come to see me as a couple, mm -hmm. they've clearly been moving down the scale mm -hmm. more towards condemnation, of, of especially the differences. So I'll ask things like, you know, tell me how different you really are and what is uh, your um, ability to accept that person. Mm. Uh, usually I'll ask a question like this. Do you feel loved and accepted by your spouse for who you are in contrast to who they want you to be? I'll just think about that gap. Who does my wife want me to be? Who am I really? And, and I'm thinking for people watching this, it could be parent and child. It could be friend and friend. A absolutely. Yeah. I just started with a marriage relationship, mm -hmm. but in any relationship. And to what degree do you feel loved um, even so. And so if I could say, oh, my wife, I think my wife loves and accepts me, even though I know she would rather I was uh, a little more detailed in some of the things. And I know she wishes I liked flowers more like she does and et cetera, et cetera, uh, that sort of thing. In fact, the, the, the thing that we talked about <laughs> in that first talk was country music. Uh, that was a thing that when we got married way back when, 40 something years ago now, uh, we both disliked country music. But as time went by, I started to like it. And now, if you go into my car, two out of the five stations are punched into country music. I like country music, you mm -hmm. know. Um, Sherry, she comes from Europe. She doesn't really have a taste for it. So I keep bugging her, are you going to be moving up the scale <laughs> <laughs> from solid condemnation of country music <laughs> to, to at and, least and, enduring? And honestly, that was yeah. the whole point, is there's yeah. something she's never going to embrace. Uh -huh. I would actually say she's up to tolerate. Wow. She watched a country music award show with me a few weeks back and watched the whole thing, watched for three hours. Mm -hmm. and There's some catchy uh, signs in that. But it's turned out to be this interesting thing spiritually, and I, I love the thing that you're doing 
on radical acceptance and it ends up being you know it, it, even again in a close relationship if you ask can you change your child can you change your parent mm -hmm. can you change your spouse I usually instantly revert to this scale if you've sufficiently moved up if if you want something to change in me and you're gonna press me on that John which you certainly do in our friendship if I don't feel loved and accepted already for who I am the likelihood that I'll be able to take in your input about the way I may need to change is low but in if fact, I when feel you write about this you talk about uh, the three rules for changing your spouse Yes, the three rules for changing anybody, mm -hmm. certainly your spouse, are number one, lose interest in changing your spouse. Second rule, lose interest in changing your spouse. <laughs> Third rule, lose interest. Sort of like real estate and location, location, mm -hmm. location. Um, it turns out, but the, the bed, and that's why this series that you're doing feels so exciting to me, is that based on our feeling loved and embraced, mm -hmm not just loved, really, not, not just tolerated, uh, but embraced for who we are, is, I believe, what you're teaching and what the Bible's teaching about setting the stage for transformation, growth, uh, and change. So I, have, I find myself pointing to this scale. Um, I have a little arrow, what, what direction are you going? I might even use this just with an individual, John, like mm -hmm. if they are dealing with a troublesome emotion, a negative emotion, I might be finding it with, the, with them in the Psalms, that sort of thing. I'll, I'll want to know the same thing. To what degree are you able to embrace? Mm -hmm. and can we move towards embrace? Can mm -hmm. we move towards? Sometimes I'll tell people, my job right now with your anxiety, for example, is to try to get you to hate it less hmm. or to stop condemning because the very condemnation that you apply to your own, oh, I hate feeling anxious, I hate feeling depressed, in some ways can exacerbate and make the problem more stubborn, stubborn, stubbornly resistant uh, to change. So, But, it, but uh, if somebody's feeling depressed or they're feeling anxious, they're not going to like that feeling. No, and I'll usually say something like that. I may not be able to get you all the way up the scale to loving, embracing, mm -hmm. but to be able to tolerate, that's where I might use that word tolerate, uh, sort of the middle point mm -hmm. of the scale, is if I can tolerate. Though, you know, John, I actually do, I do try to even move it harder. I will ask some people at times to try to welcome their mm -hmm. emotions. What they happens if they don't do that? What if I say, I feel anxious and I just hate this and I keep trying to resist it and I gotta stop doing this? It will Why is that a bad get idea? worse. Well, be, I'm, I'm a pragmatist about stuff like that. It's understandable to me why you might hate your anxiety. It's so mm -hmm. troublesome. It's so annoying. But by the very condemning or hating that you're doing, it actually amplifies it and mm -hmm. exacerbates it. So it's kind of a practical observation that if I can welcome it, allow it, sometimes even more aggressively, mm -hmm. this is what I want, mm -hmm. And, and think of doing that with differences like in, in a relationship that you're in, that it's really okay. I, I'm allowing, I'm, I'm like permitting, if, if I can use that word, the differences to um, exist because a lot of times the force of relational conflict um, is I need you to change. I need you to be different than you are, yeah. which again is a demotivator. I'm unlikely to, <laughs> to change. Why do you yes. laugh? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just thinking if somebody said that to me, uh, you know, the intent is to motivate the other of person. Of course. I, I want you to change. I want you to know how much I want you to change. But that ends up not being uh, a very motivating thing to hear. Which seems so yeah. applicable Counter. to God, yep. right? Yeah. Like if God yes. is truly died for me, embraces me in my brokenness and where I am, mm. And springboarding from that, I want to know the different ways that I can participate with God in growth and transformation that, that, that just feels like the right sequence mm -hmm. uh, to me, which is, I think, what radical acceptance probably uh, ends up meaning. One more question. Um, where do people struggle with this the most? What's the, what's the point of greatest resistance or where do you most often see problems with people moving up the scale? What keeps them from doing that? Pride. I think mm. their pride that they're right um, and that mm. their natural instinct, which is to point out, criticize, condemn, um, is just so strong. I, I think I think the hardest point is it's counterintuitive, you know, to 
accept things that are negative, negative emotions, or accept things that are challenging, like differences in another person, or even things in myself that I don't like. I think my pride, boy, that's a hard question. I don't know if that's exactly the right word, John. Um, what I felt when you said it is it really takes us back to um, what's been foundational for us on this journey together, which is I can't. Yeah. He can. I think I'll let him. You know, that's and, it. That's even better. Yeah. Like, it's just so hard. Yeah. It's just so hard to allow for and welcome things that are so challenging like that. that so if pride is um, whatever it is that keeps me from surrendering. Yeah. Um, that's the struggle point. Yeah, yeah, and this just so feels like the Jesus way yeah. uh, to do that. So, stay on the Jesus way. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, John. I embrace, you. <laughs> I I embrace, embrace you. I embrace you too. <laughs> and I embrace you. Yes. Next time. All right. Hey, we're so glad you're here. More than a video to watch, we hope this is a community you can engage with. So add your voice to the comments. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Follow us on Instagram or join our Facebook group, becomenew.me. We'll be posting daily questions and resources for you to engage with. And if you want real-time text alerts, you can text the word become to the number 56525. So take a step, get connected, and we'll see you next time.